Hey everyone out there on YouTube, it's Paul, and I'm coming at you with kind of a serious video dealing with a topic um, that's very near and dear to my heart, um, same-sex marriage, and specifically same-sex marriage in my state of Maryland. Um, and after I read you my letter, I'm going to give you some links and some information on what you can do to help. But first, I have prepared a little letter to read to you. In Maryland right now, there's a bill being introduced that would legalize same-sex marriage. Recent polls have indicated that a majority of Marylanders are actually in support of same-sex marriage. The governor, Martin O'Malley, has vowed to sign this bill into law if it makes it to his desk. All signs point to a clearly positive outcome in our state for equal rights. But then there are people like Don Dwyer, who is a delegate from Glen Burnie, who is attempting to block the progress that's much needed in our state. Recently, he wrote a guest column for HometownAnnapolis.com, a subsidiary of the Capitol newspaper, wherein he outlines his opposition to equal marriage rights. I have supplied a link in the underbar so that you can read it too. After his brief introductory paragraph, which outlines his opposition, he immediately starts to throw out the tired argumentation of homosexuality as a choice. He also states that he knows many former homosexuals. This has been thoroughly debunked, but in case you weren't aware, modern science and psychology actually agree that sexual orientation, whether it be heterosexual, bisexual, or homosexuality, are innate and immutable. We are born to attract with attractions to whichever gender that we are, and then we stay that way throughout the entirety of our lives. Ex-gays, quite simply, do not exist. Conversion therapy, quite simply, does not work. Many who are ex-gay admit that they, while in a heterosexual relationship, still have same-sex attractions, but they just choose not to act on them. They freely admit that they aren't actually changed, but are merely playing it straight, as it were. All major psychological associations in the world formally condemn conversion therapy and note that it has a detrimental effect on the psycholo psychological well-being of its patients. He goes on to mention a failed civil union bill that has never been seen by the legislature. He says that this was because gay people wouldn't settle for anything less than the term marriage. In reality, it was because the civil unions that it would have created were not actually equal to civil marriage. Um, the civil unions would have emitted many crucial rights that are granted to legally married individuals. Further, why should we settle for a civil union when there's no logical and legal reason for us not to be married? This sort of mentality creates a situation similar to the separate but equal that we saw before the integration of public schools. Um, by creating a similar institution, the government's sending the message that gay people are somehow less than their straight peers, and that their love is not equal. Our country has lived through separate but equal once, and has thoroughly decreed that it was never equal, and was never good enough. He then argues that homosexuality is not a normal lifestyle. What defines normal? Is it objective? Subjective? What? Is normal simply the way of the majority? According to all major reputable psychological associations in America, homosexuality is a natural and healthy state of being. It occurs in nature all the way throughout the animal kingdom, from flies to dolphins to human beings. He then continues to argue that if the state recognizes homosexuality as a normal lifestyle and affirms it by giving us marriage rights, they'll have to teach it to kids in public schools. Well, I have two big things to say about that. Number one, so what? If kids learn that being gay is nothing horrible and deplorable, it will create a much-needed wave of tolerance in our country. If they're educated on how normal gay families are, they might be able to shake the arbitrary bigotry instilled in them from generations past and create an open and accepting society. Of course, that would just be terrible, right? And two, they hardly teach anything in our basic health classes in the public school system. I'm a graduate of the public school system in Maryland, and I can vouch for that. Health education is seriously lacking in this country, especially when it comes to the types of families that exist and on how to practice safe sex. They hardly teach anything to the heterosexual majority, let alone the homosexual minority. Trying to use this as some sort of scare tactic should be very transparent to parents. It isn't as if teaching kids that homosexuality is perfectly normal and natural will make them gay. It will just make them less likely to bully and discriminate against those that are. His final argument rests solely on religion. Before I address his claims, I'd like to remind everyone that in our country, we have separation of church and state. Quite simply put, selective religious morality and poorly translated Bible-based bigotry have no place in our government. He claims that there is, quote, no doubt religious leaders will be eventually forced to marry same-sex couples should this bill become a law in Maryland. After all, it would be considered discrimination if a church refused to marry same-sex couples once the state changed the law. Well, actually, Don Dwyer, the law as it is written explicitly forbids anyone from taking legal action against a church or a pastor who does not wish to perform marriage ceremonies for LGBT couples. This is another cheap scare tactic. Unfortunately, it's one we've seen far too often. Anyone remember Proposition 8? 
The thing that freaks me out the most from all these groups is that they use the same tired, overly debunked argumentation to defend their point of view. To a logical person, it makes them look desperate at best, and at worst, it makes them look like bold-faced liars. The people who generally believe them are the kind of people who claim that they want the government to be less involved in our lives, that they want limited government. But really, what they mean is that they want the government to only allow where, what they illogically and randomly decide is permissible, and then outright ban everything else. That is both grotesque and hypocritical. If your party stands for limited government, then please, allow the government to have one less control over the population. The worst wickedness in this world is willful ignorance. If you're simply ignorant, that, in and of itself, is not a bad thing. You just need to be educated, and then you'll cease to be ignorant. However, if you're willfully ignorant, that means you take pride in ignoring the facts and are basically oblivious. These anti-gay rights groups are willfully ignorant, and they're using cheap scare tactics to take advantage of those who simply don't know any better. That is both manipulative, and it makes them cowards. I've often said this, but it bears repeating. Being gay is like being a part of a community outreach program. It lies on our shoulders and the shoulders of our allies to spread the truth and the positive message even in the face of blatant, arbitrary, and stubborn ignorance and prejudice. If we don't speak up about these things and try to change the minds of those we can, or at least let people know the real facts of the matter, we'll never get anywhere. In our country, people are being killed for being gay, whether it's through bullying, zealous bigotry, or emotional and physical violence. If we, as a society, and especially as a government, continue to send the message to kids that being gay is evil and abominable, we'll see a generation of kids who don't make it past high school. And if they do, we'll see people who are sitting in their 40s, withering away, trying to make a heterosexual life work for them when they're in fact gay, but are so, it's so ingrained in them that they must be anything but. It's absolutely heartbreaking, and is totally disheartening. If you're a citizen of Maryland, I ask that you simply listen to reason. Equal marriage rights for LGBT couples will not destroy your marriage to your husband or your wife. Equal marriage rights will not cause society to implode, won't cause your pastor to get jailed, and most of all, it won't force you to even recognize our marriages as valid. Um, in reality, gay people agree with most of you. The institution of marriage is weak right now. But contrary to popular belief, gay people don't want to degrade that. They actually want to strengthen it and renew it, and strengthen it with our love and our commitment. Um, if you are in Maryland, a perfectly good out, uh, place for you to outreach is with Equality Maryland. Unfortunately, there was a rally today in Annapolis that I didn't get to attend, but they have a petition and a letter writing campaign that you can take part in through their website, which is equalitymaryland.org, and you can write your local representatives to try to garner support for the bill. I did, but I reworked their letter because I didn't feel it was inclusive enough. Um, Second of all, if you aren't a citizen of Maryland, you can write the, the local representatives too, just to say that you support same-sex marriage and that you support equal rights for gays in our state. Um, and on a national level, you can write your congressmen, your senators, you can write even the president if you wish, and talk about how this issue is extremely important to the well-being of our country and to trying to fulfill the promise of being the land of the free and the home of the brave. Um, and I'd just like to leave you with all those links in the underbar so that you can get involved. And I hope to hear from you guys. So, peace out everybody.